if you read his judgment you ask yourself whether this was a a, 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 a judgment coming out of a political rally or it was a, a judgment coming out of a legal process. <laughs> Welcome to this edition of Free Talk proudly brought to you by Hutton Soul TV and Radio in partnership with the Frederick Newman Foundation. Now on this program we believe that dialogue, national discourse, is the most important thing in building a nation. This week's edition we're going to be discussing a very sad issue, an issue that is heart rendering, an issue that when you listen to will bring tears into your eyes and pain into your heart. For 10 years, someone has been kept in jail for a crime that they did not commit. Their life disrupted, their freedom taken away from them because of the party that they chose to support. Just last Friday, they were released from prison, acquitted of charges of murdering a police officer in Glenview. It's a story that you have heard. But the two gentlemen joined me this evening to discuss their journey in Jikurubi Maximum Prison, their fight for freedom, and how it felt to finally test it. Here on Free Talk, the program that keeps Zimbabwe talking. Now, thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us in studio uh, this evening. Can you just maybe just kindly uh, last uh, introduce yourself and tell us just a brief how you have spent the past 10 years of your life. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Last Mayengama. I am a member of the MDC. Uh, I was uh, arrested in 2011, 29 May to be specific, for allegedly killing a police officer in Glenview. And uh, I spent most of my time since that time in prison and I was only released this last Friday when I was acquitted by the Supreme Court. How, how, how was the journey, the, the 10 years, how was it for you? It was a painful journey. It was a painful experience. It was the, the most difficult moment of my life. It's not an easy thing to be a prisoner. It's even worse to be a prisoner in Zimbabwe, in Zimbabwean prison, given the conditions that are there. So it was very difficult for me, but I thank God that I am now 
here with my freedom. Mm. Just coming to you, maybe just a brief introduction of yourself and also just briefly tell us, you know, uh, your experiences in the past 10 years. My name is Tumemere Mazukere. I was arrested in 2011 for allegedly killing a police officer, Chief in, uh, Inspector Petros Mutid. So from there, I did not test. I briefly tested freedom when we gave, uh, given bail, but we were inducted again in the airport and I was readmitted into the prison up to 4 June. This is last Friday. I was uh, inside the prison. I was incarcerated as a prison inmate and specifically as a political prisoner because I was treated as a political prisoner because instead of being allocated or to reside in the halls where all the other inmates reside, I was transferred to where the condemned prisoners, those prisoners under the death, sentence of death, were. And uh, that's where I, I was residing, among just, those condemned prisoners. Just tell us how it felt being in that section of with condemned prisoners when you were not supposed to be there. Yeah, uh, when I was in that section, in fact, I was feeling pitiful for them because they are traumatized. It seems as if each and every day they will be uh, expecting that maybe they will be come, they will be taken to the gallows. They are traumatized, and uh, uh, you can feel pity for them. But why, why were you taken there when you were not a condemned prisoner? I don't know. Because when I asked the officer in charge, he said it is, uh, it is our responsibility to allocate you some cells. That's why I said, look at it, a single cell. And, uh, I don't know the reason. But I think just because I is a political prisoner, when we were given, we were given grievances during his inspection uh, programs, the moment you, you give a, a grievance, you may turn it to be a political grievance. Then I was separated from the other inmates. I want, I want us to go to the moment that you're going through trial, knowing in your heart of hearts that you are not part of this. And looking from the, the, the accused box, looking to a police officer leading lies, as they has been concluded by the Supreme Court. How, mm. how did you feel? Yeah, it was a difficult moment because uh, even when the police officer, especially inspector Nyarare was testifying against me, he was, when he was telling lies that uh, he had seen me on the scene of crime. Those were lies, but uh, it was very painful for me. Uh, I didn't believe that a, a police officer can uh, testify uh, can testify falsely in the courts. That's when I experienced that they can also testify in the courts falsely. Uh, at one time, I had hoped that we were going to be acquitted earlier when the relatives of the deceased testified in court and think that these are not the actual perpetrators of this crime. We thought that the three men of us thought that we were now going to be acquitted earlier, going to have an earlier acquittal. But that was not so. I ended up being one of the seven who were asked to go to the defense. Kumalas, you know, we, we are human, we, we have feelings. How did you feel, you know, sitting there and knowing that you were in church, a man of faith, but someone with confidence would stand there and say, you are the one who did it, and you have end, end 10 years of your life without your freedom. Uh, actually, when I was uh, convicted, uh, I received the conviction with shock. 
I was uh, shocked. I was not expecting to be convicted because I know that uh, I am innocent and the uh, ample evidence was given before the court. And it was very clear in any uh, justice uh, uh, delivery court uh, that I was supposed to be acquitted. But then I just found myself being taken to Chikurubi maximum circuit prison. So there was that period of shock. Uh, you have to be in a shock for some time. Then you start to find yourself and to start to recover yourself and to start to live your life. Otherwise, if you don't recover from that shock, you can actually end up having some suicide attempt. You can actually end up resigning to life. Uh, so you really need to be strong. So in my part, I think uh, the spiritual part played a role that I had to turn to spirituality, I had to turn to God and say, God, this situation is too big for me. It's overwhelming. I can't help it. I, there's nothing I can do. Please, can you help me? So I give all glory to God. Uh, there's no credit I can give to myself as an individual. But the situation was too much for me. How do you count the days in prison last? One, two days, weeks, they turn to months, now they turn to years. How do you count those? Well, at first, you, when you just enter the prison, you'll be very conscious of time. So you'll be counting in terms of hours. Then you'll be counting in terms of days. Then you'll be counting in terms of weeks any months and at the end you'll be just counting years. We are now talking of years. The next year, the following year, you, a month is nothing to you, a week is nothing to you. So you'll be counting to two years when we are used. Mm -hmm. So this is how we have been experiencing our life. I, I heard Hopewell Chingono say that when he came to prison you protected him and others from trouble. What kind of trouble or problems are they in prison? Well, uh, the system, it somehow recruits some inmates uh, to be their eyes and ears. They can also use some fellow inmates to harm other inmates or to spy other inmates. So when Opo and at one time Job Scala came, uh, some inmates were sent to them so that they would spy them to get information and so on. So we had to alert them because we have been in the system for long so we know the characters of the people involved. So we tell them we must be mindful of this one. And also in terms of their food, how it is handled, who is handling it and so on. So we are giving them those tips uh, because uh, otherwise uh, the Jongwe scenario, the Lenmo Jongwe scenario, is real to every politician. Mm. So that's why Opo and his color were very grateful to us. It's because we were like giving them the tips of how to survive the threats in a prison. Mm. The, he, said, he, he last talks about threats in the prison. Uh, but when you came in, you were newbies. How did you manage to survive those with who helped you? to understand the system. Yeah, uh, I was held by the other inmates who were convicted earlier uh, how to adapt to the prison situation. Because sometimes when uh, at first you do, if you don't have hope, the next thing you do is say ah, maybe this is now my home. So I must adapt to the situation. And we were helped by the other inmates. So you lost hope? In of, of ever getting out at some point? Because of the miscarriage of the justice and knowing that I was a political prisoner, I was expecting that. And in fact, it's, sometimes you can have hope uh, depending on the... In fact, you can have some hope because of some submissions which were made by our lawyers and the way they were arguing in the courts. It can give you hope. But with the system and the miscarriage of uh, justice, and it's where the delayed judgments, you end up losing that hope. Mm. And you, you now decide to adapt to the situation. Tell me 
the worst things that you saw while you were being held for the past 10 years? About the prison system, the is so much congestion in the prison system. There are many inmates which are more than the facilities themselves mm -hmm. in the prison system. I heard the uh, spokesperson for prisons claiming that they can manage to keep 17,000 17, inmates in the prison. But that's not the case because I don't know what capacity she was talking about because they don't have a capacity to feed the prison inmates because they fail to provide what is provided in the data scale. But you don't look oh. like you were not well fed. How did you... We were fed by the solidarity which we were given by our relatives and our friends because in prison we are allowed to be given food from outside. So our friends and party members, our colleagues, we bring some food items and non-food items which would complement what we were given by the prison. Otherwise, if that had not come, what would have happened to you? Obviously, my health could have deteriorated because there is no balanced diet in prison. It's an unbalanced diet. Sometimes you are forced to eat the same meal which we eat during the lunch and at supper. Describe this meal for me, uh, to, so that we can have a picture of what. You can have salsa and boiled cabbages. You cannot say cooked cabbages, but it's just boiled cabbages even for three consecutive weeks in prison. Then sometimes they can give visas and beans even for two consecutive weeks in prison. So it's an unbalanced diet according to the food security. There's food insecurity in the prison. What were your worst moments? Well, I saw people falling sick. I saw people deteriorating in terms of their health. I saw people dying. I also saw people getting insane in prison. Uh, but they failed to comprehend the situation. So it was very traumatizing. Someone you spend time with, someone you share stories with, then the next day he's lost his mind. Uh, the, the next day he has been admitted and you told that he's normal. Uh, and uh, I've been called uh, several number of times to conduct some uh, funeral services because we would do some funeral services for our fellow inmates. I've also saw people getting troubled when they received bereavement messages. You know, when you're From in outside. prison, you are told your mother has passed away, your father has passed away, your wife, your kids, and so on. And there's nothing you can do. You cannot go and mourn your close relatives. So it's a double mourning. You have to mourn your uh, departed relative, and you are failing to mourn because you are in a, in a prison. So it's very, very traumatizing. We have also seen people losing their wives. See? Uh, most of the, the first thing that you would lose when you enter into a prison, the first thing that would be at, your, at, at risk is your marriage, and so on. So we have seen most people uh, uh, troubling. Uh, it's, 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 it's a sad situation when you see psychologically people try to, to deal with such situation. There is also a sense of rejection, a sense of abandonment, uh, uh, and a sense of unwanted that you feel as a, as a prisoner. You feel unloved. Is there any support in prison that is provided for people who are going through this process that you're describing? There is no such support. Although it is supposed to be there, but uh, our prison is not uh, giving inmates such support. You know, in 2013, when this new constitution was promulgated, our Zimbabwe prison service was transformed to Zimbabwe prisons and correctional service. Uh, 
we thought that they were now giving the legal framework they were now shifting from a prison system that was focusing on punishment and retribution to a prison system focusing on rehabilitation and correcting an, uh, an offender but this is just on paper right now we are yet to witness any programs in place to ensure that when someone gets into a prison he has to come out of that prison a better person a transformed person who is going to be useful in society but the reality is that the people who get into a prison they come out they waste people they may then continue are you waste i'm not waste but uh, i'm just one of the exceptions the majority of the people uh, they end up reoffending actually when you read the statistics of people reoffending it's more than 50% of people i don't blame them the prison is not uh, doing much to make sure that these people uh, they are not coming to a prison to be punished they have been punished by the courts it is not the business of the prison to punish offenders the courts punish them but the prison is there to rehabilitate them and prepare them for their going back to the society but they are continuously being punished the type of food they are given is a punishment the type of clothes they are given is a punishment where they sleep is a punishment there is also something they call strip search strip search is where all of you you have to be naked completely naked in Can, one space in one space a room like this one this is a, more or less the size of our cells a cell like this one will be accommodating about 45 inmates and then is everyone of you can you remove your clothes you see so you have no dignity you have no dignity you know a, a 20 year old boy a 70 year old man they are together there they are just marching they are, they, are, they are naked what for there is no reason and this is something that is done you are sometimes you are just say throw it too much there and then you, you come back naked naked so they are trying to remove your your dignity they they claim that they are, we are doing it for security reason but because of this covid they have not been doing much of it and nothing happened it proved that is it's not necessary so it's dehumanizing that's the most thing that offended me and it's even against their laws but the laws are very clear which if a prison officer suspects that an inmate may be having something which is dangerous and it necessitates that is strip search he is taken aside in a room and he is strip searched out of the sight of other inmates there should be that one inmate and in office but we are made to be naked in mass mm. and this is something that he really offended me do you have any highs or any good moments that you would think of that were part of your prison stay well uh, the only time I will be I, I can describe as a good moment is when we are worshiping. The one thing is that we are not restricted much when it comes to expressing our religious beliefs. So we use that as, as, as a refuge to run away from the pains of the prison. So if you went into a prison you become a prayer warrior and so on and so forth so that is something that can sustain us for some of us who are believers mm. two are you are you bitter about being incarcerated yeah but i don't believe in vengeance uh, i can be bitter but sometimes you must forget that you are not the first one to be incarcerated when he actually we are innocent so i have got i had to bolden myself and uh, i have now forgiven even those who were responsible for my unlawful incarceration
So you are not going to seek justice to ensure that those people who stole from you your freedom pay. No, not exactly that. Personally, I can forgive, but I don't want to create a situation where they can continue uh, violating people's freedoms, freedoms rights. Because of that reason, I will, I've got to sue them so that they cannot repeat to the others. Otherwise, if we don't sue them, they may continue doing that, uh, the miscarriage of justice even to the next generation. So to stop that, I got to sue them because it's, it's, it will be a responsible action uh, to make sure that it may not happen to others. Do you think that you are ever going to get back what you lost? Yeah, I have got to hope just because God is for everyone. And God has always provided me. And I know that you will provide me with all what I have lost. I understand that you are struggling uh, after coming back home to find that you have been left. How is that experience for you? I was so pained because for uh, a long time with so much deep in love as a couple with my wife. So when I found the uh, not at home, and my kids not at home, and my, the, our property, was, I can say it was our property as a family. Uh, the, all the rooms were empty. It pained me a lot. And to learn that after waiting for me for all, all those years, then she left me eight months before, before my release from prison. Was she, just imagine. And I also feel pity for her because I know that she also she may also be experiencing hard times. But doesn't this justify your anger and bitterness towards the system? That can justify that. That's why I say that it must not happen to other people. When, so the where do you find the strength uh, to to forgive? when you are in this pain? As a Christian, because we have got that prayer, our Father, where we also ask God to forgive us, where we forgive others. So as a Catholic, as a Christian, that's where I find strength. How do you plan to move on with your life right now? Yeah, at the moment, my mind is now occupied because I'm suffering from racing thoughts. Because uh, of that experience where you can find your wife not being there at, at home. So at the moment, I'm suffering with um, racing thoughts. But I'm trying to manage this, my stress. Do you employ have, stress, stress management. Do you have social support around you at this particular moment? For the past days, I was quiet. I was waiting to find out what really happened. So it is my first time, even my friends, they were not knowing that. They have also learned that today. That's what happened to me. And I know that they can give me support. And then... Sure. Last, how is it for you coming back into society? How have you been received? Well, we have been away for quite a, a long period. Uh, so we are happy that at least uh, the society is not necessarily rejecting us. So we have been well received and there are people who are trying to help us to, to take it from where we left going forward. So I am very optimistic that we are going to be more better people than we were before we went into prison. Uh, if we look at it from another perspective, uh, prison was a blessing in disguise because I am no longer the same last who went into the prison. Tell us, I, what has changed I, I, I come out a, a different person. 
uh, I'm now a, a better person. I now have uh, an appreciation of issues of life better than I, I was doing before. Uh, you know, in prison, you have uh, quiet moments. You have a lot of time to do reflection about your life. You can even go back from the day you were born to your primary school, secondary. The mistakes you made, the good decisions you made, the horrific things that you explained and so on. So you have a time to meditate and reflect on your life. You also have a time to see where you went wrong, where some paths that you were checking that are, were disastrous. So you have that time. And also when you share the experiences about life with other inmates, you begin to, to, to make reference to your own life. So you know about life and you are now better equipped and better prepared to deal with issues of life, mm -hmm. to deal with the difficulties. Because it is a, a community of uh, people with problems, people with suffering, people with all sorts of difficulties. So you are exposed to them, you are sharing experiences. So it's, it's, it's a paradox in a, in, in a prison. It can, it can either destroy you or it can make you a better person. Because you can also use that time of meditation in a negative way or you can use it in a positive way. But S Same question to you. Are you bitter with the experiences that you've gone through? The prison environment is designed to make you bitter. It's designed to make you angry. It's designed to make you lose your, your hope in life and see yourself as a useless person. Uh, but still, you can uh, manage uh, to avoid being bitter. Uh, because the bitterness, it affects you more than anyone else. Bitterness is a disease. Bitterness is a, is a demon that can actually destroy you. So one of the things that you need to do is to find ways of conquering that demon uh, called bitterness. Because it will not kill those people whom you are against, but it will destroy you uh, as a person. So this is what I've been trying to do from the day when I entered into the prison. That uh, please Lord, help me not to be bitter. He helped me not to be, to be angry. Actually, in our uh, church services, we used to have the, we used to have some prayer points. And one of our most regular prayer points was to, can we please pray for our enemies? Can we pray, please pray for people who caused us to be in this situation? You see? And people would say, oh, how can I do that? So it was a, a religious way of trying to assist each other, to, to love those people, to help them, and so on. Because we are both victims. The PU and the perpetrators, we are both victims. Because a normal <coughs> person should not cause harm to another person or to wish someone to be in a situation we were. So we see those people who deliberately lied. You know, the state created the witnesses. And people under oath, they say, I know Tunga was there, I know last year was there, but they were lying. So we feel pity for those people. They are also victims. A normal person should not behave like that. So we should also love them. And uh, for some of us who are believers, to pray for them so that they can be changed and become a human being. Because they are animals in a way to believe like that. <laughs> democracy the state must protect the people yeah you are a victim of state indiscretion how does that feel that he who was supposed to protect you betrayed you yeah it uh, clearly shows the magnitude of the challenge we are facing yeah. as a country uh, it's unfortunate that the kind of politics we are having right now, they politicize everything, every institution. 
even uh, marital issues, anything you can think about, it has been politicized. So we really need to depoliticize some of these uh, issues of life. Politics must have its own limitation. So the problem is that people think in terms of politics. They think in terms of power. They think in terms of money and so on. And this is destroying our country. Mm. Strong, strong words there. Thank you for joining us here on Art and Soul TV and Radio. We are on Free Talk, proudly brought to you by Frederick Newman Foundation. And we're talking about being a prisoner of conscience for a good, effectively, eight years. And the other two years battling for bail. How do you start? Where do you go to after spending 10 years of your life denied freedom for an offense that you know you did not commit and that eventually the courts say you did not commit? Now, to, there's a time I accompanied Morgan, the late Morgan Richard Changirai, who wanted to come and visit you. And he was denied that opportunity to visit you. Did you hear about this? Yes, we heard that. That he was denied that opportunity to see us. They said that he was supposed to be cleared by the head office. In fact, even uh, recently, many visitors were not allowed to see us, although some inmates were allowed to see their visitors. Ours were asked to get clearance from the head office. So they we were so pained by that. And you then heard that Mugim Changai passed on while you were in prison? Yes. I know you were close to him in some instances. I, how, how did you take this? Uh, it was a sad situation because I felt that there was now a big void in the struggle. There was a big void in, the, in our party because he was a good leader to us. Morgan could unite people. Morgan could lead professors, could lead lawyers, could lead engineers, could lead, he was a good leader, and we uh, were learning a lot about leadership from him. And now, this, you remain a member of the MDC. Some would want to know which MDC are you part of because when you came out, you found it split. Yeah, myself, I'm a member of MDC Alliance. Because the, I believe that that is the part uh, which can bring change to Zimbabwe. MDC Alliance, which is led by Nelson Chamisa. Because people have got no other uh, option, they've got no other alternative to the Zambian regime. The only option, the only alternative is MTC Alliance. Some people have said that there's need to talk to ZANU-PF so that we can move this country forward. After suffering in the hands of a ZANU-PF government, do you believe that there is that opportunity to have dialogue? Dialogue, uh, it's not the first time uh, uh, political parties in Zimbabwe uh, had to opt for dialogue. Because dialogue helps political parties to realize the opportunities for being uh, united for the purpose of bringing development to the people. We had, in Zimbabwe, we had some talks even in 1979, but some, some of the talks were done by the wrong people. Like for example, in 1979, there were some talks between the Smith regime and the Abraham Zorewa, which was wrong. But I believe that people should identify their differences and solve their differences through the dialogue. Because I respect other people's opinions. I don't believe that if you, if you differ with other people's opinions, then you treat them as enemies. But we should appreciate that we have got different opinions, but we must find ways to find each other so that people cannot be victimized 
by the differences of political parties and the political leaders. Some have believed that your incarceration is a warning coming to you and others in the opposition that if you mess with the system, it will deal with you. Has that warning worked with you? Has the warning, you know, some believe that it's an attempt to ensure that you do not continue as a political activist. Now, is this working? Yeah, it cannot work. Why? Because even if you victimize people, they can even become strong. Are you stronger? I am no stronger than I was before. I am no stronger than I was before because I can, my spirit cannot be broken because of incarceration. incarceration. If they come and arrest you again today, are you ready for that? It's an occupation as it to be in politics. So you must always be prepared even to expect the waste, especially from the Sanpiev regime. Some have said that there's a change from Robert Mugabe to Emerson Nangagwa, and therefore things could be better. Do you think so? Uh, there may be some changes in other areas, but uh, for the meantime, I, I don't see any, uh, some big changes because they are almost the same. Mm -hmm. what, what, what have you seen that has remained constant? In fact, when I was in prison, I was following what the government was doing, making some blueprints which are very good, but which cannot be implemented, like the National Development Strategy. We find good, we find that the implementation... So you can go even in Shona, it's fine. Implementation slowly. Plus, do you think there's any change from what you have seen or experienced? There is a big change, but for the worse. We are now in a worse situation than we were before. Why do you say that? Uh, this many who is at the realm is the worst thing to ever happen in our country. It's the worst thing to ever happen in our country. In terms of repression, in terms of poverty, in terms of human rights violation, in terms of closing any democratic space and gains we have tried to gain for the past four decades. This guy is trying to erode those things overnight. So we are in trouble as a country. Every day we wake up having the same guy uh, on the helm. It means we are in a big trouble. So the change we are having is uh, a big change in terms of worsening things. Mm -hmm. uh, some of but us how do you know things are worse? How did you how do you know things are worse? You were you were caged, you didn't see what's happening outside. We were in Zimbabwe. It could be maximum security prison is in Zimbabwe. So we were not in the mass. So everything that was happening and affecting uh, every Zimbabwean was also affecting us. If not worse. In fact, a prisoner is affected with, you know, if we, someone who is out is having some economic challenges, that will be reflected on me, because he is no longer able to bring my put he used to bring. He is no longer able to bring some oranges he used to bring. So we do feel the pain, we do feel the suffering more than any other Zimbabwean. Mm. So we're very much away, and we also had our own ways of trying to follow up what has, was happening. Some of us were very disappointed when Zimbabweans were celebrating. Uh, we didn't know whether they were celebrating that Mugabe is gone, or they were celebrating that we now have Munangago. 
but it was appearing as if he, they were celebrating that you are in a new dispensation. Especially those who is, you know, I don't like them. New dispensation is the Second Republic. What new dispensation? What Second Republic? It's an insult to the Zimbabweans to try and uh, force them to believe that we are in a new dispensation. Mm. We, in terms of governance, it is NPF that has been governing this country from 1908. Mugabe was not governing this country as an individual. It was a system. And the same system that was ruling this country in 1908, it's still in place, intact. So why should we talk about a second uh, republic or a new dispensation? When it is the same faces, the same systems, uh, which are actually now perfected. The operation is now perfected. There are some who believe, who, uh, I mean, same question to you. Do you think that prison actually succeeded in making sure that you stop being a political activist? It has never worked the anywhere and elsewhere in the world. To try and think that if you kill someone, if you beat someone, if you take someone to prison, you would stop them. It's a lie. I don't know why they do not even learn from their own history. It could not deter them, but they also go through some of them uh, through this process. If it could not stop them, what makes them think that it can stop us? When it could not stop them. So you, you have not been stopped, but want to understand, people would want to understand out there, which political formation are you going to be working with as you continue to be a political activist? I am a member of the MDC Alliance led by President Nelson Chamis. Are you... Why not the MDCT, which says it's the original MDCT that was led by Morgan Tangerai? The originality is not in a name or in a, someone claiming that I'm original. The originality is measured in terms of the values, the ethos, the principles what made MDC to be formed in the first place. Some of us we are founding members of MDC. We were there, we attended the National Working People's Convention in 1999 at Zimbabwe Women's Bureau when we were crafting uh, our charter as a part. So some of these formations are deviating from what uh, the MDC was formed for. MDC was not formed for individuals. It was not formed for any name, but it was formed for the people. So you see some of these fights, they have nothing to do uh, about Zimbabweans. People are just pursuing their own personal interest. That is not MDC. The MDC is about sacrificing for the people. We want men and women who are prepared to lay their life for the good of the generality of Zimbabweans. Mm -hmm. And if you see some of the issues that are happening, people are fighting for a building, people are fighting for this. What is a building to do with the uplifting of the standard of the Zimbabweans in general? It's about the personal interest. But there was a court ruling which decided the leadership dispute of the MDC T. And you, you don't respect that court ruling? There is a separation of the legal and politics. People should not use legal means to uh, pursue their politics. It is not the business of the courts, in my opinion, to form and dissolve political party. The political parties are formed and dissolved by the people. These are voluntary organizations. So we don't need a court order to, 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 to give us legitimacy that we are a party or we are not a party. So 
So I think they are abusing our judicial system. The court should be uh, refused to be abused by these politicians. These are issues that should be decided by the people through political processes. The president of MDC must be elected by the people, by the MDC, not the court. So what was happening is that the San PF wants to destroy MDC. And they are now using the courts. In the same way, they tried to use the courts to uh, take to prison innocent people. The only reason why I was taken to prison is because I am an MDC person, because of my political views. So they are now using the courts, they are now using parliament. For example, the, all the recalls that are happening. They are abusing the state institutions. Politicians should not be allowed to abuse our judiciary or our laws. People decide whom they want them to lead them. What, what words would you share if you were to meet the judge who sent you to prison? If you were to just sit next to him and talk to him? Well, I'm happy for him uh, because I think uh, this ruling is more about him than us. So he has to do some reflections on it as a, a, as a judge. And he, he must make sure that those mistakes he did on us must not happen to other uh, uh, accused persons who will be brought before him. So it's for him to do a reflection. Uh, I'm sure he had the copy, he read it, and he's taking some notes so that he improve on it, so that no any other person would suffer the same way we suffered. And to the president of this country, who is then the head of the state that put you in this place? Well, when we were convicted, or even when we were arrested, uh, the current president was the Minister of Justice when we were arrested, and he, he was also the Vice President. So I would like to believe that he, he was more involved in our case even before he was a President. Because he was the Minister responsible for prisons, the Minister responsible for judicial and so on. So what ways, so if you could see him today, what would you say to him? Well, I would just urge him as a president, that he, as a president, Mr. President, when you are elected, you are now a president for the country, not as an NPF president or an MDC president, but you are president for everyone. So when he's discharging his duties, we expect him that he, whether I'm MDC, I'm whatever part, when I come before him, he must see me as a Zimbabwean and remove those political uh, glasses he is wearing. I'll ask you the same question. What would you say to the judge who sent you to prison if you were to meet him? The judge must learn from the Supreme Court ruling so that he must not repeat the same thing, uh, uh, giving, uh, in fact, he must not continue to convict innocent people and sending them to jail. Because, uh, like in the case in myself, it has destroyed my marriage, it has destroyed the life of my children. Otherwise, I've got to work very hard in order to restore the normals on my children's development. So the judge must not victimize people on the basis that they are political activists. He must learn from the Supreme Court judgment that he must follow the law as it is and must not be influenced by the political decisions. And if you, are to, if you were to have an opportunity to meet President Emerson Mnangagwa and talk to him, what would you say to him? Pertaining the way he is running the country. Anything including your incarceration? Yeah, 
as the president, as my colleague has already said that he was a minister of justice, even during the <coughs> our time in prison, we had another court application where we are asking him as minister of justice to allow prisoners to vote. He must just respect the people's rights, respect our constitution, especially the fundamental human rights. That's the best way to run the country. And like what I said before, that we must also respect other people's opinions and take into account what builds the country. Rather I than, mm -hmm. rather than uh, concentrating on personal gains. I understand while you were in prison, you did some education. Can you just give us a brief? Yeah, when I was in remote prison, I studied for a diploma in public relations and client services. And uh, at Kurubi, after being convicted, I studied, um, studied for Bachelor of Science Honours degree in Development Studies. The, this program is related to me, on, uh, especially on the issues of governance and issues of development. Because the courses which are, are offered for the program of development studies, may, they, they include environmental management, strategies and politics of development, include even statistics for development. How was it, how was it going through that, that study? Was, was government very supportive? No, there was no support from the government. Even in prison, it was the prison is no better educational facilities. And the, when it comes to payment of fees, Usually it is done by some different organizations in the, in the community like churches. But these organizations, they, pay, they usually pay for primary education and secondary education. For tertiary education, getting the, 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 the fees were paid by our families and party, and party members, some colleagues who were also assisting us in paying the fees, but not the government. So you, you finished this degree, the Bachelor? I've not yet finished. I am now in the third year, second semester. I'll be finishing next year. Next year I'll finish after ten, two semesters where I'll have an attachment, a research project, and two courses every semester. But for the last semesters, I was studying four courses per semester. Only, only in the final year, just because there is a research project and a, and a practical attachment. You also, you also did some, some education in prison. Can you just give us your experience? How was it? Yeah, actually, I'm in my last semester. I'm in my fourth year as a student of religious studies and theology. So if all goes where well, I'm supposed to be graduating at the end of this year, uh, we enrolled with the Zimbabwe open university for this degree program and uh, like what my colleagues say there is no support concrete support uh, from the government or from the prison system to people who are pursuing education at tertiary level uh, you know it comes back to uh, what i referred to earlier that the government should be concerned about uh, rehabilitating and uh, empowering inmates by facilitating that they acquire skills, courses, and so on. So they should be happy if they see the, that there are inmates who want to put their time to use by studying, and then they should support them. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, unfortunately, that support is not there. Also, you quoted a saying that they actually want to censor your your, your assignments, your assignments uh, even the, with some materials you would have sourced from outside, so you want to sense them. Sometimes they can keep your books for two months, three months when you want to read them. They say we are still uh, sensing them. But these are academic books. When I have written my assignment, you know, if that assignment is of poor standard, I will be penalized in terms of the marks I get not for the uh, prison. I remember my colleague one time, he was actually uh, requested to rewrite his assignment 
removing some of the things they thought were offensive uh, and they refused. How can they do that? It's an academic assignment. It has to go as it is. So these are some of the challenges. So they, are, they will be frustrating uh, our uh, bid to, to, to further our education. Mm. I want to thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, for joining us here on Free Talk, uh, the program brought to you by Frederick Newman Foundation and Heart and Soul TV and Radio. But before you go, I would want to ask you to, to say what you feel strongly on your heart, what you would want to say uh, to the people of Zimbabwe and to everyone who's listening to you right now, from your heart. From my heart, I encourage the people of Zimbabwe to participate in the affairs which affect them, as provided by our constitution, even the political participation. For those who don't want to be activists, they can also participate effectively by exercising their rights, like the rights to vote, to have confidence that it that if they vote, they will be exercised their rights of choice. Because voter party uh, can cost the country. Because uh, what people believe will not be recorded. Amazing. Um, just, just before we, we, I allow you to do your conclusive remarks, tell me, what other characters did you meet there? You, you had Kereke and Gumburate. How are they doing? Uh, we actually at one time stayed with them uh, in uh, in uh, pinna blocks, those single cells. Yeah, in prison there are no barriers. You know, when you are all prisoners, you become one. The people don't even consider that you are ZPF or you are MDC or you are this or you are that. So this is how we have been relating with people like Gumbara and Kerek. We just see ourselves as fellow inmates. Amazing. Now I'll allow you to um, have your conclusive in remarks, you know, from your heart, from the depth of your heart. Just address the people of Zimbabwe and those who are listening to this story. My message to Zimbabweans that is coming from the the best part of my heart is that we must love Zimbabwe. We must love our country. And the only way we can demonstrate our love, our great love for our country is to be jealous about it. We should not allow evil to happen in our country if we love it. If you love someone, we don't want that someone to be harmed. So we must see Zimbabwe like our beloved someone. So when he, all those things that are happening in our country and we are not doing anything, it shows that we don't love our country. So we must love it and we must show it by being prepared to stop every evil that may be happening in our country. I want to thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Tunga, and I'm wishing you the best in your, as you build your life and as you continue with, with your studies. Um, so, uh, last, Kuma, last, um, welcome back. Uh, welcome back to this open space and hope that uh, you will contribute positively towards building a Zimbabwe that we should all love, as, as you have just put it. Now, viewers, this was the story. Ten years behind bars. Ten years of being denied freedom. Ten years lost. Ten years of pain and ten years of hope. Now they have freedom. Thanks to the battle that has been put forward to ensure that the mistake was corrected. Beatrice Mtetwa, the lead lawyer in this case, with Charles Karamba, both of them fighting to get justice 
for these two amazing gentlemen who have come out, as you have heard them say, better people out of prison, but more determined to continue their political activism and to occupy political space to deliver a Zimbabwe that they think would be better for all of us. And for me, Blessed Mthlanga, Dara B, and the entire team of HSTV behind the scenes, and our amazing partners, Frederick Newman Foundation. Thank you very much for making us a station of choice. Until next time, this is Free Talk. This is Free Talk in partnership with Frederick Newman Foundation, our partners in free speech. Free speech is the center of development of any nation. Thank you.